Okay, in this section, I'm going to talk to you about the graphs. Before we get into graphs, um, right now we're just talking about relations. And a relation between two quantities it can be expressed in equation form. You're probably familiar with the Fahrenheit Celsius uh, equation. Um, there's also an equation for uh, interest and principal in, in finance. And then there's also an equation for uh, revenue and the items sold when you're in, in uh, manufacturing and retail. So we want to look at um, how we might graph some of these equations. Now, we're not into functions yet, but most of these will be functions. Uh, if you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. It's coming up in a later section. All right, so let's go through and graph y equal minus 3x plus 2. Basically, I choose these five values generally when it's appropriate. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug these values in as the input, and I'm going to see what the y get, gives me as an output. So let's do that. If I plug negative 2 in, I get negative 3 times negative 2, which is 6, and then 6 plus 2 is 8. So I get this point here. On these examples, try to imagine that the graph is not there. Make the graph invisible until I get, let, get finished. Okay, so now if I plug negative 1 in, negative 3 times negative 1 is 3, and 3 plus 2 would be 5. So I would plot the point uh, negative 1, 5. If I plug 0 in, I would get negative 3 times 0 plus 2. That's going to give me 2. So when x is 0, y is 2. And if I plug 1 in, I get negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1. I don't have that one labeled, but it's this point right here. And then if I plug 2 in, I get negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. So I get 2, negative 4. And then you now can see that these points all seem to follow a straight line. So all you need to do is just get you a ruler and line those points up and then draw the graph that I've got drawn there for you. Okay? All right, that was a linear graph. Now the next one's going to be a quadratic graph. Uh, this is y equals x squared minus 2. So let's plug in my numbers that I like. If I plug negative 2 in, negative 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 2 is 2. So I get when x is negative 2, y is 2. If I plug negative 1 in, I get negative 1 squared is 1, and 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So when I plug negative 1 in, I get negative 1. If I plug 0 in, I get 0 squared minus 2 is negative 2. So I get negative 2 when x is 0. And then when x is 1, I get 1 squared minus 2, which is negative 1. And then when x is 2, I get 2 squared minus 2, which is 2. And now, again, imagine that I don't have the, the graph laid on there yet. Well, now what you have to do is you have to connect these dots in a smooth fashion. And so when you do so, you'll get this parabola that you see in the picture that opens up. Let's look at some more. Um, you can do this one on your own. Uh, I just did one real similar to it. So let's let's go ahead and not do that one. You can freeze the video and do number one on your own. Um, number two is actually a constant function. It's, it actually falls under the, the, the guise of linear function. And let me tell you something I did here, which I probably shouldn't have done it yet. Let's just call these y equals, because I'm actually using function notation on here. And I probably shouldn't have used function notation until I covered functions. So I'm just, just pretend like all these just say y equals instead of f of x equals. So y equals 3. Okay, so how would we graph y equals 3? Well, here's what that means. It means no matter what the x value is, the y value is 3. So if x is negative 2, y is 3. So here's negative 2 for x, go up to 3. And if x is negative 1, y is 3. So at negative 1, we get 3. And, it, and so no matter what x is, if x is 0, y is going to be 3. If x is 1, y is going to be 3. If x is 2, y is going to be 3, and so forth. So you can see that that just lays out a horizontal line that goes through this point 0, 3. So that's, 
that's what a constant function looks like. So again, that's the function y or the graph of the equation y equal three. Sorry, I, I have a habit of calling them functions sometimes. Okay, so let's say we have y equal x squared. Okay, so if you have y equal x squared, we did one similar to that just a minute ago, but if x is negative 2, y squared is 4. So that would be, you know, maybe right here, negative 2, 4. If x is negative 1, when you square it, you get 1. So at negative 1, we get 1. So that would be about right here. If x is 0, 0 squared is 0. If x is 1, 1 squared is 1. And if x is 2, 2 squared is 4 again. So now if you draw the graph through these dots, you'll see that you'll get the graph that I've got drawn here for you. Now on the next one, I have to use a little common sense. So this one is, you know, y equals square root of x. So in order to graph that, uh, I, have to, I have to think a little bit. You know you can't take the square root of a negative number and get a real, real solution. So we know we can't plug any numbers to the left of the, of the y-axis in. But I can plug 0 in, because if I take the square root of 0, I get 0. So I know that when x is 0, y is 0. I can plug 1 in and get a nice number. The square root of 1 is 1, so I get 1, 1. Now, if I plug 2 in, well, 2 would give me the square root of 2, which is not a nice round number. Approximately, it's 1.4. But let's do this. Let's find the next number that, that is a perfect square, like 4. See, if I plug 4 in, I'll get 2. So I'm going to go out here to 4 and then plot the point 4, 2. Okay, now if I wanted to go out far enough to the next perfect square, 9, so let's say if I went out here to 9, well, it would be up here at 3. So, you know, if you wanted to go out that far, you could. But notice the, the picture you get here. You get this curve that comes up from 0, 0, and kind of tries to flatten out as you go farther and farther out. Okay, so that's y equals uh, square root of x. Now, y equals x cubed, I can go back to my five numbers that I like to use. If you cube negative 2, you get negative 8. Well, that's not on the graph, but if you were to try to plot it, you'd be negative 2 would be about right here, and negative 8 would be way down here. Now, if you plug negative 1 in, negative 1 cubed is negative 1. So you would get the point negative 1, negative 1. If you plug 0 in, 0 cubed is 0, so you get 0, 0. If you plug 1 in, 1 cubed is 1, so you get 1. And then if you plug 2 in, you'd be way up here somewhere at 8. So you don't really have to, you know, draw it from here all the way up there, but you can kind of see what's going to happen. It's you pick it up right in here and then do a little dipsy doodle here and then continue upward. And that's y equals x cubed. And again, treat this as y equals x cubed. All right, so y equals cube root of x, okay? Well, now on square root of x, I had to think of numbers I could take the square root of. On cube root of x, I need to think of numbers I can take the cube root of, like negative 8 or negative 1 or 0 or 1, or 8. All these numbers have nice round uh, cube roots. Cube root of negative 8 is negative 2, so I'm not going to plot that one. That's off the graph. Um, cube root of negative 1 is negative 1, so negative 1, negative 1 would be right here. 0, 0 would be right here. 1, 1 would be right here, and then 8 is off the graph. Now, if you want to go way out here and plot the point 8, 2, and then go way out here and plot the point negative 8, negative 2. That's fine, but your graph would still have this shape here. Now notice both of these graphs have three of the same sets of points. Negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. But the shape is different. Here, the graph goes almost horizontal when it crosses 0, 0, whereas here the graph goes vertical as it crosses 0, 0. And we'll learn how to determine that later. Okay, the absolute value, going back to my favorite numbers, absolute value of negative 2 is 2, absolute value of negative 1 is 1, absolute value is 0, 0, absolute value of 1 is 1, absolute value of 2 is 2. So I get negative 2, 2, 
negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and then 2, 2. And when you connect these, you actually get a V-shaped graph. Okay? The reciprocal function here, if you, you plug in, we're just going to do one side of it because it has, it has pieces on both sides. But if you can do one side, you can do the other side. Let's do the positive side. You can't plug in 0. Um, but if you plug in 1, you get 1. So let's say that's the point 1, 1 is right there. If you plug in 2, you get a half. So we'll say that's right there. If you plug in 4, you get a fourth, and so on. So if you plugged in, you know, 10, you'd have get a tenth. So it'd be very, very small. Now, if you plug in fractions between 0 and 1, like if you plugged in a half, well, 1 divided by half would be 2. So you'd be like, be like right here. And if you plugged in a fourth, well, 1 over a fourth is 4. So the closer you get to 0, the higher it would go up. So, and then if you do the same thing with negative numbers, you'll see the same action over here, but in the negative sense. Okay, so this is called the reciprocal function. Now, the identity function is just a, a uh, particular linear function or linear rep. Again, uh, y equals x. You don't have to worry about f of x, you know, on these. But, um, but anyway... Um, these are just, this is just a line. Y equals X is just a line where it, it, at each point, at each point, the X and Y values are the same. So you get 0, X is 0, Y is 0, X is 1, Y is 1, X is 2, Y is 2, X is 3, Y is 3, X is 4, Y is 4, and so forth. So that's just a, just a simple line that goes through the origin like that. Now, this function is a little tricky, but here's how it works. Um, the greatest integer function is the it, it returns the largest it returns the largest number that's less than or equal to what you plug in. Okay, so if I plug in 0 0.1, then it's going to give me the return is going to be zero because that's the largest integer. If I plug in 0 0.5, I'm going to get zero. Even if I plug in 0 0.99, I'm going to get 0 because it's going to return the largest integer. So if I plug in any number from 0 up to but not including 1, the little circle there, then I get 0. But as soon as I get to 1, well, 1, the largest integer that's less than or equal to 1, is 1. And then anything, 1 point anything, no matter what you put here, 1 point anything is going to be 1. And so it's going to be 1 until you get to 2. So at 1, you're going to get 1. And everything in here is going to be at 1 until you get to 2. And then it's going to jump to 2. And then, you know, it just does the same thing. And then it jumps to 3 and so forth. And it does something similar in the negative. Negative 0.5, negative 0.1, negative 0.9. The smallest integer less than or equal to negative, point, negative 0 point something is actually negative 1. So this is going to be negative 1 from here to here, and then it's going to jump at 0 up here to 0. This is also called the step function. Okay, so here's a couple of piecewise functions. Let me just show you one of them. This breaks at the point x. So basically, this vertical line represents the line x equal 2. And so the left of 2, when x is less than 2, I get this horizontal line. Uh, y equal 3, and then when I, if x is greater than or equal to 2, I get this line over here, y equal 2x minus 1. And so if you plug in the numbers, uh, you'll see that you, you get, uh, when, you, when you plug in numbers less than 2, you plug them in up here and you just get 3. But when you plug a number 2 or greater, you actually plug them into the second function, and you get these numbers. And so you can plot this line just using these three points, 2, 3, 4, 7, and 6, 11. Um, the next one is uh, similar, on the, but on the left, you've got a left of 0, you're drawing the absolute value function, and to the right of 0, you're drawing the parabola x squared. So it breaks actually at the y-axis, which is where x equals 0. So you can freeze the video if you need to to look at that. Uh, I'm going to do the rest of this section on a second video.